another how-to video and today y'all we are going to be discussing on how to dress as the gothic noble now y'all voted this one at third place uh, and many people do want to know what did they dress like what did they look like and and entirely how did they fight well as you can tell I am dressed up as the gothic noble for this one and next week we will have ourselves the late gothic warrior because uh, which is by the time period of the downfall of Rome but for this video as y'all can see we are going to be discussing the gothic warrior so how were they dressed well they would have actually been dressed and armed nearly identical to that of a Roman legionnaire especially the late Roman legionnaire since the Roman military actually used gothic or other Germanic tribes like the Goths in their armies and they would actually be known as the Fudurati or the Patarati. I will leave a link down below if any of y'all wanted to check it out. Um, so who were these type of warriors? Well they were technically as you could put as an auxiliary unit. Mercenaries. These units would pretty much well uh, fight for the Roman Empire and in doing so gain Roman status. So yeah. Now the equipment I am wearing is that of scale armor with a Roman style helmet. 
and in doing so, a Roman-style Spatha-like sword. You get my point? The majority of the time period in history, the Gothic warriors were dressed in equipment nearly identical to that of the Roman legions, especially uh, if they were officers. In fact, the infamous story that which we get from the Gothic culture is that majority because of the Romans, we kind of originally thought that they were from the lands of Germania. However, anything uh, Roman, here's the thing. I always find this weird because uh, the Romans' belief system is that anything north of the Rhine or Danube is labeled as Germanic, majorly because of the language. In fact, the language of the Goths is, well, from Scandinavia. In fact, the Goths originally came from Scandinavia, who migrated further south. If that was either because of, one, a better area for agricultural areas, or too uh, big of a population, we don't know. But the thing is, the Germanic and Nordic language of the Goths, and as well the Germanic language of other cultures, kind of sounded almost near identical, because one, that's kind of what it almost translated out to. Now, when people automatically understand the Goths, they automatically remember them for the sacking of Rome. However, many people don't realize is that they already had established their own kingdom uh, north of the Danube River. And in doing so, until the Huns came around, it's actually stated that the Huns actually forced the said Germanic people, or the Gothic people, whatever you pronounce them as, to actually, well, seek refuge in the Roman Empire. And in doing so, the Roman Empire emperors at the time actually allowed them to. Problem is, uh, corrupt government officials kind of caused the problem. In doing so, it later, well, started to cause revolts, and, well, ended up leading to a Roman emperor burned alive in a small farm shed, if you believe the story. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of why I'm not a big fan of politicians. <laughs> but, uh, many times over, though, the Goths would also be later responsible for the sacking of Rome, of which had not occurred at, for the Roman people ever since the Celts had sacked it under the, na under the command of Brennus. So, the fact is... The Goths sacked the city of Rome, and this was the second time it had ever been sacked. But they didn't just do it once or twice, they did it like around three times. The fact is, the German people were, or the Gothic people were fed up, so guess what they were going to do? Revolt and destroy the city of Rome, and as well claim land in the land of Gaul. However, they would later have to move further south because of the Franks. And in doing so, they ended up claiming lands in the lands of Iberia, in southern Gaul. However, there is the Visigoth and Astrogothic people. In other words, one ended up uh, after the fall of the Huns and such. It's later stated that the other Gothic tribes ended up, well, emerging and claiming their land into the lands of modern day Italy, until they would later be overthrown by the Lombards. The Gothic people would also end up holding off their entire land in the lands of Iberia until the Sejitur or until the, uh, well, the Muslim Caliphate ended up, well, conquering them. So, yeah. But don't get me wrong, the Gothic people were very tough people. In fact, they actually defeated the Romans, they defeated the Huns in a major battle. And the fact is, these guys were very much uh, entirety of the Roman army. In fact, the majority of the Roman army at the point in time period of the late Roman Empire, especially of the late Roman, uh, late Western Roman Empire was mostly made up of Gothic or other Germanic tribes. So, yeah. Now, the equipment as I'm wearing, as I said, is scale armor. This armor entirely I love. It's light and effective, which is probably why most Gothic nobles were stated to have worn something near identical to this. They would have also worn a uh, style of helmet near identical to that of the Roman style or Something like that. So I'm just using one of my uh, late Roman style helmets. So, because one, it's very hard to get different variations. However, many sources actually state that the Gothic king Alaric, who sacked the city of Rome, was stated to have worn scale armor that was overlaid with gold. I don't know if that's true or not. But it's stated that the scale armor he wore was 
had sleeves and such, and as well, even went down nearly towards his thigh, uh, midway on his thigh. I don't know if that's true, so it's hard to say. However, it also stated that he had a golden ring-trimmed uh, helmet. So in other words, it was silver and gold look. So the best image I could put up is this one, so yeah. Uh, but the weapons they would have also used would have been, well, as I said, the Roman style Spatha sword. Some of these actually were beautifully uh, gemmed up. In other words, they had beautiful gems or gold trim on it to make it that awe foe from afar type deal. Or sometimes they were just already like that when they got it from the Roman army. Now, the belt I'm wearing is that of a late Roman style belt. As you can tell, this type of late Roman style belt, this is how they would have worn it. There's also this little ring lip here that actually ends up having me help me, well, hang my sword. No longer I had to have a baldric style type of belt over my shoulder. Which means I can easily just draw it like so. Which makes it a little easier for combat use. But yeah, I am wearing this equipment and I literally don't feel that much weight as I normally do. I feel extremely light and effective. Now the only way to kill somebody with scale armor was actually stated to you had to thrust upward in the unprotected part of the scales. So in other words, there was hardly any way to kill this guy, especially if you were hitting him with a sword. Sure, they would feel a little blunt, but they wouldn't feel much impact as they would with a mace. In fact, even a spear thrust with this tapered point, I don't think it would have done anything. Unless it went underneath the scales. So, yeah. Now, there was a, some accounts that they state, that stated that Gothic nobles would have also worn majority of male. However, also with helmets, they would have worn a variety of helmets. They would have even worn late Roman style helmets entirely. So, it depended. Now, if you were the lesser noble, you would have even worn a bull helm, as it's called, by the Gothic people. It would have looked pretty much near identical to that of the uh, early Germanic noble, but uh, that's a video from another time. So, yeah, as you can tell, let's get right into this one, shall we?
like that little bit of a rundown. Now, as y'all saw, with me moving this armor, I felt no fatigue. And the thing is, this is lighter than my laminar. That's saying something. In fact, I feel lighter than in this when wearing my laminar or my male armor. And the problem, and I think the major reason is, my arm is not weighed down by the mail. And as well, due to these light scale design, this makes it almost easy to actually move in compared to laminar. And the fact is, you don't actually have to uh, worry about repairing this much as you would laminar, because one, you gotta take the entirety of the, uh, whenever the laminar breaks and such, or needs repair, you gotta remove all the uh, leather lacing. Which is probably why the Gothic nobles preferred to wear the scale. It was a lot easier and cheaper to manufacture and repair compared to laminar, because one, then you're going to have to waste time trying to undo the entire strand. So, we can definitely see why the uh, Gothic warriors would have probably preferred to wear something like this. So yeah, Gothic nobles definitely love... I kind of like these guys even more now. So, yeah. But if y'all have any type of ancient warrior in history y'all want me to look up and do, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to uh, add it to our list, because one, we got a big list with these guys. And I always like to see y'all vote for whichever one we should do next. Because while wearing this stuff, I feel no fatigue. It feels extremely light, extremely mobile. The the only cool thing is, it's so light and effective, I can see why the Goths use it so much. But yeah, this is the Gothic equipment of the Gothic noble. So the fact is, this would have been quite aw common to see, rather than mail. Now, only those that of which could afford this uh, ended up wearing it. Now, as I said though, there are different variations. Some accounts actually state that the scale armor was sometimes half half a sleeve long, in other words, where my red tunic ends. Other accounts state that they were always sleeveless. There are also some accounts they had actually a doublet design on it, so it varied from person to person. But it could see why this armor was probably used a lot more than laminar by the Roman military. Because one, this is cheaper to manufacture and repair. As well, the swords, as I said, they had different variations on the sword designs. Some of them had silver, some of them had pure gold. It depended. Some of them, their shields were decorated. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm what you would call a gothic noble to the very end on this one. So this one, definitely awesome. Light and effective. This almost feels just, like, in fact, even it, with this armor on, I feel light and effective like as though I would be the uh, early Germanic warrior. In other words, I would feel little to no problem while wearing this equipment. I just can easily move in it, so yeah. But if any of y'all have any ideas on, as I said, another video for a how-to video, let me know in the comments below. We will happily listen to y'all. Anyways guys, it's been Celtic Templar. Hope to see y'all in the next one. And as well, stay tuned for next week when we have the late Gothic warrior, or as it, or as uh, I'd like to call it, the late Germanic warrior. Anyways, guys, this is Celtic Templar. Hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all. Mm -hmm.